Alright, time to see the results of my next review. <laughs> Man, I hope people want to hear about Ayane's high kick. That's an obscure title that not many people have heard of. I mean, <laughs> why would people want to see me bash on an anime that three reviewers in our community have already done anyways? Alright, time to look at the results. It's no surprise to some of my fans and subscribers that I hate Green Green. Hate it so much that I did not want to finish watching the anime. And it's been in my back burner for, what, almost four years? Well, after the people speaking, and some willpower, and by willpower I mean alcohol, I sat down and completed the viewing of Green Green. And after thinking about it and analyzing it, I have to say it's the worst anime I've possibly seen in my life. And here's some bad anime that I have seen just to illustrate how bad Green Green is. Garzy's Wing, Sin the Movie, Dokro Chan, Love Hina, School Days, Two Seasons of Vicky Tosin, The First Half of Queen's Blade, and Two Episodes of Sekirei. Yeah, Green Green is worse than the shows I've just listed right there. Now before I actually start off this review, I have to make a little disclaimer that there will be a lot of major spoilers in this anime, more than what I usually do. Why? Well, the purpose of my positive anime reviews are to encourage those who have not seen the anime to go give it a chance themselves. Thus, I try not to give away too much and spoil everything, but I give away enough to entice the audience into what they want to see. So, the opposite of a positive review being a negative review, I'll give away some of the moments and maybe the ending so you don't have to waste your time and possibly money to see this. Now since I have that out of the way we can actually begin. Green Green is a 12 episode plus a couple mini OVAs plus one hentai episode romantic comedy series about an all boys school located deep within the mountains cut off from civilization and popular trends. A last existing paradise for boys. And I'm quoting from the anime's intro here. The boarding school is called Kanonone Academy, and they are about to be visited from students of an all-girls school for a one-month trial merger to see how it would go. And you know, just from describing that, almost feels like a soon-to-be rape scenario about to happen. By the way, did I mention that this is based off of an H game? Because it is. Anyways, when the all-girls bus arrives, one of the students, Midori Chitose, attack hugs one of the male students, Yasuke, claiming to have known him in the past, is in love with him, and he is supposed to be in love with her, except he doesn't remember shit about anything regarding Midori. And the whole major plot of the series is trying to get Yasuke to remember Midori and their past romance, while hilarity, and I use that term loosely, ensues with the supporting cast. I want to focus on some of the side characters, some of the stupid moments regarding them, and some of the cringe-worthy moments before I go back to Yusuke and Midori. Why? Because the anime barely gives a shit about them until the last three to four episodes. Where else to go from here but to start with Yusuke's horrible, horrible friends? Three guys that act so goddamn offensive in this anime, it sends all men back to the caveman times. Seriously, these characters actually made me feel ashamed to be a bro. And that's how bad they are. Okay, first off, we have Ichiban Boshi. While looking the most pretty boy than all the male supporting cast in the show, he has less of a chance of getting a girl, due to his poor actions of drenching himself in perfume and taking bullshit advice from some romance book he likes to depend on. Which, one, because of the advice in that book, he actually hides in a woman's locker and pops out to the woman dressed up like some fucking bird in episode 7. He is interested in the character Futaba, who we'll cover on later in this review. Next is Tenjin. Now, this rice ball chomping psycho has some sort of a lolly sister fetish thing going on because he wants Sanai, the token lolly of this anime, to refer to him as Big Brother. 
and he loves to just chop down rice in front of women for some reason. I, I, I don't understand that. And lastly, we have Bachi, the short, fat fucking leader of this trio from Oblivion. He's a disgusting human being doing crazy gross things like placing bananas on women's heads that came from a banana branch tied to his bare crotch. Oh, and how about sucking up all the bath water that the women were swimming in? Both of these actions can be found in the second episode. So the audience has to focus a lot on this trio from hell because what they do is supposed to be funny, guys! Yeah, they do this shit because they, because it's supposed to be funny and you're supposed to laugh about it! <laughs> but it wasn't! It wasn't funny! It was painful, disgusting, and horrifying at the same time! I couldn't laugh at this, I'm sorry, but I, I can't. And I do laugh at some stupid shit. I like panty and stocking, for God's sake. Now, there was one moment in Episode 7 where Midori tries to help the three characters out and mentions about being in the women's shoes. Now, everyone knows that saying, you know, being in somebody else's shoes. It's basically trying to get their perspective. However, these characters are so fucking stupid, they took it as a literal sense and put on women's clothing, thinking that they could have the mind of a woman. Oh, I almost forgot to mention... Something that Mr. Anime, Hardy, nor the Anime Overviewer mentioned. And this could have been helpful. I probably would have traded this uh, DVD away if, I, if, they, if they brought this up. But, uh... Reika gets molested by a trio of monkeys that bear a resemblance to the aforementioned trio. And Bachi gets raped by a bear. I wish I was making that up. Episode 9. Both occurrences happen there. Now those two moments, as well as the cross-dressing thing, nearly drove me to turn off the DVD player and make an apology video to my subscribers and cancel this review. That, that was pretty bad. That I, I, I never canceled a review before, but I was tempted to. But I'd do it for you guys, for you. You vote for this anime, you want me to review, you want me to rip into it. I'm, I'm, help, I'm only doing this for you. Now, take the unfunny moments from those characters and the fact that none of the characters develop, develop, nor do they have an arc about learning to respect women and treat them like uh, human beings. If that was the case, I would actually be a little less harsh on them. Now, let's move on to well, the female cast. Hopefully this won't take long, because most of them are just plain forgettable at best, but I can't keep my word. Uh, Futaba. A purple-haired, red-eyed Sundari character who kind of resembles the Major from Ghost in Shell's standalone complex. And she's probably the most developed character in the series. She starts off as a total bitch who wasn't looking forward to the whole Kananoi Academy merger thing. And she was actually hinted being part of a love triangle between Yusuke and Midori. However, as the series progressed, she ended up being nicer to Yusuke and, you know, kinder to everyone else. Hell! She even asked the nurse to have mercy on Yusuke's friends and have them attend a summer dance festival after being banned from it for peeping in the girl's bathhouse. Fuck, that's angelic of her. Then we have Reika, who is Midori's roommate, and at the beginning of the series, she was very antagonizing towards Midori, taunting her, saying she'll never be with Yusuke or he'll fall in love with someone else. But later on, after Yusuke gets his memories recovered, she ends up being extremely nice to Midori and congratulating her for, um, defying destiny. That kind of character development would just made me scratch my head there because, you know, I don't know, she was, she was an asshole at first. It, was, it, it, it did not feel like that she had any reason to be nice to her from that point. Then we have Sanai, the, you know, lolicon character with the illness... We got Futaba's sister, Wakaba, who walks around with a potted cactus named Mr. Togamora. That cactus being the only character I like in this anime, by the way. And we have Chigusa, the nurse from the girls' school, and the only chaperone from the girls' school there, too. Who once unintentionally cock-teased the boys, such as wearing a bikini at the school pool during swimming lessons. And lastly, we have Orissa, a girl with glasses that would have some weird Bashonen Yaoi fantasies. Now, while she is like the only character that likes the idea of men hitting on her and whatnot, 
uh, the three dipshits that are Yusuke's friends are actually revolted by her face. Question. Why? Because she wears glasses? It, she doesn't even look that ugly. You know, it's nice to know that these characters are not only perverted and disgusting, but their standards are too fucking high. Alright, let's wrap up explaining the plot with our two main characters, which doesn't even pick up until two-thirds into the series. Midori, all I can say about her character is that she loves Yusuke, is a very nice person, even wanted to help Yusuke's friends to get girls in one episode that I mentioned before, you know, the cross-dressing one. Yusuke, though the character with the most common sense and acts like a legit gentleman, is still boring as all hell. In fact, I don't even know why someone like him would put up with douchebag friends like his. Apparently, they mentioned some kind of pact that they made in the past, but they never explored what the hell that was. And as a result, Yusuke has to put up with this shit and even, you know, take some of the blame for it. He was even forced to sneak into a girl's dorm against his will. Um, he was also forced to go peeping at a bathhouse, and there was a time where the guys dressed him up like a woman first, while he was unconscious. Anyways, I'm, I'm sidetracking here. At the end of episode 10, Midori does the whole cliche, cliche trip and land onto Yusuke, kissing him, thus unlocking his memories of Midori in the past. Then Reika shows up and reveals that she is an agent of fate, saying that it is because of destiny that they were never meant to be together. They can't fall in love because the writer said so is also an acceptable answer. Well, in their past lives, they were in love, but it was forbidden. I don't know why it was forbidden. They never explained it, and they swore to be together in future lives, and they killed themselves. However... Yusuke was reincarnated in the 20th century, and Midori was reincarnated in the 31st century. Yeah, there's elements of science fiction in this anime. Go figure! Midori regained her memories and traveled back in time to meet Yusuke. And Yusuke, you know, loves Midori now, but he has an identity crisis because of his memories of his past self coming back. Even though we don't know what his past life was like or how it differs, differs from the UCK we know but his friends think he changed even though he still acts the same and Midori and Yusuke meet at the shack on a rainy day at the summer dance festival to know how to you know deal with this but Yusuke gets a near fatal concussion outside Midori sacrifices some of his life force to bring him back. Reika takes Midori back to the future with the necessary 1.21 gigawatts that she needs to power up the tree. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, sorry. Gigawatts weren't involved. I'm thinking of a completely different thing. And the next day, the girls leave the academy. No one remembers Midori with the exception of a photograph of her to you know, try to keep some memory of her Kananoi Academy. And... There you go, end of the anime. Well, there's that bonus hentai episode, but I didn't see it for two reasons. One, I'm not big into viewing hentai. Two, that episode was never licensed and localized here with this DVD, because it was a hentai. Um, so yeah, the big reveal of their romance was the most underwhelming thing I have seen in this entire anime. It was a whole... There was no build-up to it. Most of the show was basically dedicated to trying to be funny, trying to be a comedy. Uh, the pacing was just... There, there was no pacing, to be honest with you, with the, with the main, main plot. It was just nothing but a bunch of wacky antics. And, like I said before, it wasn't funny. It wasn't entertaining. I, I can't remember... There, there's probably only one thing I like, uh, or I found funny... Well, it was in the second episode where the guys wanted to do some sort, wanted the women to take some sort of test that reveals a lot of dis personal information about them. Midori fills it out for Yusuke. Yusuke takes a look at it. Um, the paper gets torn to shreds. The friends got pissed off at him for looking at it, and he go and Yusuke he denies it, but gets an instant nosebleed, hinting that he has seen it. So that was probably the only time I. Uh, found it pretty funny. Everything else, I don't remember or want to remember enough to 
see why I liked about it. Wow, I talked a lot about the plot, but um, let's cover the rest of the show, shall we? The art and animation is okay at best. The male characters all look distinct and original when compared against each other. Some of the female characters, some of them do look unique in design, but others look very similar, especially in the eyes. Um, the show is bright, pretty colorful. I hope you like the fucking color green, because like the title, there's a lot of green everywhere since it's in the mountains. Green grass, green hills, so whatever. Um, and the female characters, I will admit, yeah, they, they do look pretty attractive. Um, however, there were some hard moments. I'm not showing you the characters I mentioned in drag because it will definitely melt your eyes, but if you're still that masochistic, go ahead and Google image or something. But I've warned you. Also, for some reason, the animators thought using CGI waterfall tears on hair-drawn characters was a good idea, but not really. It looked so out of place considering that almost everything of the show was actually hand-drawn. Now as for the voice acting... Bad. Which is a shame because Media Blast has licensed this and uh, they've put out some pretty good dubs in the past that I like, such as Getchikin. In fact, whatever opinions you have on 4Kids voice actors, just from watching 4Kids shows, should subject to change if you watch anything that they've done uh, with Media Blasters. But the voice actors in, in Green Green, everyone sounds too cartoonishly annoying and or too damn wooden and weak in delivery. Uh, I think the only two voice actors in that show that were good were Chigusa and Futaba. Um, as for the music, I really don't remember anything outside of the intro and the credits and that one song that was playing when Midori was leaving in the final episode. That's all I could say about the uh, audio and animation of this show. And you know what? That's how I'm going to end this review. Um, green Green, I can't recommend this anime to anyone on any reason or level. Even if you do like straightforward, edgy comedies. Because it wasn't that funny. The characters were, all, were pretty damn annoying. And the story was just so damn weak. Uh, it's not even one of those cases where it's so bad... It's unintentionally funny. You know, Garzy's Wing and Nikki Tosin to some extent. Those I can recommend if you're looking for a, that type of bad anime. But but Green Green. It it's a pain to watch. It it is. Well to those who requested me to do this review. I hope you're satisfied. I hope I even exceed your expectations. And to those who are first seeing my reviews, I hope you check out some of my past reviews as well as some of my future reviews. Speaking of future reviews, to those who did vote for Ayane's High Kick, all three of you, sorry about that, <laughs> I was holding a bouncy ball. I am going to review this anime anyways. Uh, El Hazar 2 and everything else is going to get pushed back for this. Uh, just, to, just to get that bad anime, get that horrible taste out of my mouth. I really do hope I enjoy this anime as well as the future shows I'm going to do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, hope you'll see more future videos of mine. With that said, Darkscream217 signing out.